Thank you so much for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure to be teaching this community class. Um, I've been away for a couple of weeks and I've really missed teaching. And I thought, what better way to say thank you for sticking with me, for being on my list than offering uh, this little freebie. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, I also just want to quickly let you know that I am continuing with um, Zoom online classes and I'm working on putting a membership library together. So hopefully that won't be too far off. So for the time being, we're keeping going with Monday mornings. I've also added a slow flow, um, a more gentle class, but actually quite a deep class on Tuesday early evening. I'm going to be adding restorative. And then I have all sorts of really wonderful, exciting things coming up um, towards the summer. So I have meditation courses and then I have a restorative weekend retreat um, in October. So I'm going to be letting you know about all of that really soon. But for now, um, as well as Zoom online, I've got my two in-person classes on Wednesday and Friday. So I'd love to see you. Um, there are various um, payment options. And if you have any questions about any of them, just get in touch with me. So that's the kind of housekeeping done. I hope that you enjoy today's session. Um, will be an hour. And um, of course, you have the recording, so you can always do parts of it if that suits your timing better. For practice, it would be a good idea to have a blanket or cushion. Something soft is always helpful. And then yoga blocks, if you have them, um, you might enjoy. So, yeah, we're going to hop onto the mat and start moving and breathing together. So to start with. You might want to sit either kneeling or cross-legged on a block or on a cushion as you wish. And we'll just take a few moments to kind of settle in and find our center. So before we begin, perhaps just shrugging the shoulders a few times. Yeah, maybe turning the head, checking in with the spine. And then bring a hand to your heart and a hand to your belly. And if it suits you, go ahead and close your eyes. Moment to check in and notice how you are today. Feel the body, feel the state of your emotions. Feel what's present for you in your mind. And with this practice, we work on coming into full presence of everything that's here, right here, right now, in this moment. So I'm not asking you to ignore what happened before now or what might be coming next. But see if you can dedicate this practice time towards being more fully present in the moment. Consider what it is that you would like to create with this practice. What would support you today? Is there a particular feeling that you would like to live, leave with? And then separate the hands. And as you bring the hands together, pressing the palms together, bring the hands in front of the heart in this beautiful gesture of honoring. Breathe into the hands at the heart. Consider your intention. And with this practice, may we do the right work with the right intention to carry us through our day and through our week. Namaste. Welcome. Welcome all. Welcome to class. Okay. So start with the arms out to the sides. Big breath in. Arms up bringing the hands all the way down. And we're gonna do this a couple more times. So inhaling, big stretch. Exhaling, draw the hands down. Lovely way to synchronize movement and breath. Breathing a little bit more deeply perhaps. Good. And then just moving the arms forward as if you were sort of trying to hug something. If I turn sideways, you'll be able to see. We've got this big like, 
oh, yeah. And then hopefully you feel the shoulder blades going a bit wider on the back. Yeah. So you can might even interlock your fingers here like this. And then you're going to bring your elbows back and lift your chest. And then we'll go between those two movements. You're starting to feel a little bit of flexion and extension through your spine. And what we're going to work on today is feeling into the midline of the body, feeling strong and stable, creating strength and stability, and then starting to feel our edges so we can interact with the world around us. Okay, good. So then just perhaps shrugging the shoulders, you might roll opposite shoulders. Good, good, good. Turn the head if you need to. And then meet me on all fours. So a few little housekeeping points. If you have sensitive wrists, you might want to warm up the wrists first by circling the wrists. And if you have sensitive knees, and I do. <laughs> I like to have something soft under the knees. So we're going to come into the cat-cow position. The hands will be under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Okay. And then we'll start rounding and arching the back. I'll give you a few more notes on that in a moment. If the wrists are problematic, you could actually take blocks underneath your hands. You're going to like wrap your thumbs in front of the blocks. So if you can see like that. Yeah. And that can help just to take a little bit of pressure off the wrists. Or you could bring forearms to the blocks like this. Okay, and you can still do the same. Beautiful movements. All right. So whichever you're choosing, can you move from your pelvis rather than leading with the head? Exhale, drag your tailbone under. Feel how the belly draws up. And inhale, lift your tailbone, belly softens down. Lifting the head into the arch. So this is um, such a primary movement. The spine connecting into the pelvis really feels like um, for me the starting place for my yoga practice and this can these sort of same undulating movements can be done seated or even lying down on the floor or standing so find a pace and a rhythm that connects in to how you're feeling so you might take it really slowly, allowing the breath to dictate and lead the way. Such a privilege to <laughs> have this time to move and breathe with conscious awareness. And go ahead and take your hands a bit further forward. And then as you bring your hips back and to the side, you can do these big, lovely sweeping circles. So you can keep your hands in the original position if that's better for you. But I quite enjoy bringing in these sort of richer, bigger, like, yeah, more fun, big movements, and then change direction and go the other way. And, just, and I'll, I'll often intersect like quite a sort of a deliberate and strong practice with more intuitive free-flowing circular movement beautiful now if you can do it tuck your toes under walk your hands back towards your knees i know this is not possible for everybody um, so you can always untuck your toes sit on your heels or even come up to a high kneeling position but i'm very fond of a toe stretch <laughs> so you can ease out your wrists like this Okay, and just to say a little bit more about the sequence, we're going to work on finding strength and stability through the midline of the body and also finding the edges of the body. Um, so really honing in to this sort of central stabilizing um, 
um, sequence and then starting to expand out into some bigger movements and twisting movements and then some balances and a little bit of everything. OK, so I'm going to take the blanket away so you can see more clearly what I'm doing. Come down to your forearms, elbows a shoulder width. You can have your hands on the floor or you can interlock your fingers like so and you'll press the outside edges of the hands down if you're doing that. So otherwise we're here. We're going to walk the knees back and I will just bring my T-shirt in so you can see more clearly. OK, so the knees behind the hips and we don't want the hips up too high. So you're going to bring your hips down like so. And you notice where my elbows are. So they're not back and they're not too far forward. They're kind of underneath the shoulders. Yeah. So as you press the hands down, lift the shoulders up. So you're really pushing the floor away. Hug the belly up, tuck your tailbone under. Now this might be enough and you don't need to do anything else. I'm gonna push, feel the belly, drag the tailbone under. Crown of the head is drawing forward. So you're supporting the weight of the head rather than having the head hang down or lifting and looking forward too far. So if you want to add a little bit more challenge, lift the knees and press back through the heels. Okay, now this is tough. <laughs> this is tough, but actually you get a lot of value for your output or input. <laughs> you get a lot of value for your yoga asana buck, okay? So pressing the floor away, lifting the shoulders up, drawing the belly in, Tuck the tailbone under, crown of the head reaching forward, and we're holding this, probably now it's been about five breaths. So bring your knees down, bring your hands back, come back up to your lovely cat cow, where you could just drop your head down, relax any tension, or again, take a few of the cat cow movements, okay? So I'm a big fan of plank pose. I like to do it in a way that is effective or like the most effective and actually forearm plank provides some great gains um, for sort of less time, if you will, in the pose. So come back into it. Um, again, you can choose to keep your knees on the floor. Absolutely fine. Not too high with your bum. So you definitely don't want your bum up here. OK, you're down here like this. You're pressing the arms down. Draw the navel up, tailbone is tucking under. And if you feel, you know, like nice and strong, go ahead and lift your knees. Press back through your heels. Breathe into your back. Pull the crown of the head forward. Keep reaching back with your heels. Good, and then bring your knees down. And then you can choose cat cow. Or just letting the head hang down. Or maybe taking a rest in child's pose. So with this whole sequence that I'm guiding, everything is invitational. So make sure that you are doing the practice that supports you today, that suits you today. OK, so you will have noticed that we have woken up the front of the body. Now you're coming onto your belly. And my recommendation is to put a blanket underneath your pelvis. Cross your arms. Put your forehead down on the backs of the hands. OK. And then take your legs comfortably wide lift up one leg the leg is reasonably straight breathe and hold put the leg down lift the opposite breathe and hold and replace the leg 
Okay, second, sorry, first side again. Lifting the leg up and just notice, notice what you feel. So really feeling into the back of the body, the hamstrings, the glutes, maybe a little bit into the lower back. Leg down, second leg. Leg down. Okay, now both legs together. And both legs down. Okay. Bring your arms out to the sides, like so. Forehead to the floor. I'm going to lift up the head, chest, upper body arms and legs all at the same time. See if you can keep your breath steady, jaw relaxed. Okay, relax the forehead. <laughs> Sometimes when things are difficult, we, we tend to clench the jaw, frown. You can always reach your arms forward if you wanna add more challenge. And then go ahead and rest everything down. We'll repeat that one again. And I think this is such a valuable um, yoga asana to really wake up and engage the back of the body. Okay, and then just rest down. And one of my teachers recently said that uh, yoga asana is the conscious application of the difficult <laughs> so we're choosing to put ourselves in you know interesting postures but how we're approaching them hopefully is with a sense of kindness perhaps playfulness spaciousness bring your hands alongside your chest or maybe even slightly behind your chest and then take your feet hip width maybe a little bit wider this we're getting ready for cobra so you're going to let your heels turn out and your toes are slightly in. So often we do the opposite. And actually, this feels much nicer for me. Heels out, toes in, hands pressed down. Drag the chest ribs forward as you press into the hands. It feels like the hands are pulling back towards the pelvis. And you go ahead and lift your chest. Now, it might be that you keep nice and low. Or you can perhaps go higher. Again, each body is different. Shoulder blades are down, away from the ears. And we're not over clenching the glutes, but you might just switch the glutes on a little bit. So see how it feels in your body. And again, totally fine to keep it low. How does this cobra feel for you? Shoulders down, neck feels spacious. So I find that doing locust pose first really helps me to access like a much more satisfying cobra pose. Okay, and then when you take it down, notice how you feel, tuck your toes under, use your hands, come back to kneeling, and then you can choose cat cow, child's pose, as you wish. Now come into all fours, place your hands down, make sure that you've got space across the collarbones. So you definitely don't want to have your hands too narrow. You want your hands wide enough so your collarbones are nice and broad. And then move your knees back a little bit further. So we get ready for the downward facing dog. Tuck your toes under, push into the floor, lift your hips, draw your belly up, bring your hips up and back. The arms are very active here. Neck is long. Pushing the floor away, drag the hips up. Okay, relax your neck, relax your beautiful face. 
Nice, easy breaths. So it's an active pose, <laughs> turning our world upside down, becoming strong, strong arms, strong legs, strong core. Wonderful stretch for the back. Breathing deeply in everything we do with this practice, always honoring the breath. Beautiful, and then take your knees to the floor and you're gonna to choose to either sit up or take child's pose, maybe that little toe stretch. <laughs> okay, now the next one you may want to watch. If you have really sensitive hips, you can put a blanket under your hip. We're gonna come into side plank. Again, it's another favorite where you can really get great gains for like a small amount of effort. I mean, it's, it's a reasonable amount of effort, but. <laughs> Great gains nonetheless. So your elbow is underneath your shoulder or very slightly forward. I'm going to suggest that we start with the knees bent like this. And hopefully you can see, I have my top hip very slightly forward of my bottom hip, not much. And then you keep your knees and feet together, okay, like this. So we're going to draw up with the bottom hip and you'll keep your hand on the floor or you can bring your hand to your top hip like this. So as you press, if I move that, you might be able to see a bit better. If I press that uh, supporting arm down and then I lift up like this with the bottom waist and then press into the knee, the shin and lift the bottom waist up. Now you could stay here or stretch the top arm up, but the back of the head wants to come a little bit back rather than forward and hanging down. So work to lift your forehead a little bit higher than your chin and the back of the head somewhat back. Good, now keep lifting up that bottom waist. Breathe, maybe smile, keep breathing. Good, rest it down. Now we're sp spending about three to five breaths, maybe working up to 10 breaths on each side. And because this is a fairly succinct practice today, um, we won't repeat, um, but I will show you an option for adding more difficulty in just a moment. So again, you're switching sides and you're just slightly forward with the top hip. So hopefully that makes it more comfortable for the bottom hip. We keep the legs together. You work to draw up. Again, not sagging down with that shoulder. So you're lifting up and away with that supporting arm. Just check this position of the bottom arm. Hand can be here or hand just for a little bit of uh, stability in front of you. So as you lift up the bottom hip, you might find that one side feels easier than the other. That's quite normal. You can also lift your arm. So notice if it feels like your head is coming way forward and then just bring the back of the head back enough. And you might look up, straight to the side, maybe even slightly down. Drawing up with that bottom hip and waist. Good, so again, about three to five breaths. Now, a good way that you can also add more challenge in this is to do straight legs, side plank, okay? And so I'll just show you here, your feet like you're standing on them, check the head is in a good position and you wanna keep lifting up, really lift up with that bottom waist, okay? So that is a little bit more difficult. And I find that the forearms on the floor as in downward facing plank pose and side plank on the forearms, it's actually way more difficult to achieve than with straight arms. Um, but we have less pressure on the wrists and we get great gains because you're very close to the floor. So gravity is really working 
<laughs> kind of against you, um, but it's incredibly valuable, really valuable movements. So come to all fours, we're gonna take down dog. Move your hips a little further back. Sorry, your, yeah, your, your knees a bit further back. Press the floor away, draw your belly up, tuck your toes, push into the floor, lift your hips up. Now, if you've been a regular at my classes recently, you'll, you'll notice that I'm quite precise um, with the instruction and we work quite hard, quite diligently to find um, kind of the best alignment for each of us individually. We're all slightly different. And I really want to emphasize stability first before we start doing kind of, you know, fancy poses. Let's find stability in the body. It feels to me so important, especially as I get older, you know, what a privilege to really feel stable, confident, secure. And from there, I can kind of expand out, breathe well, live my life from a place of integrity, purpose and intention. So relax your head. Use this pose to create the strength that you're looking for in life, whilst also knowing when it's time to kind of take it easy and come out of the pose. Okay, now you're going to bend your knees and walk your hands back towards your feet. And then take a standing forward bend with your feet probably now about hip width apart. And you can go ahead and just let your head relax down, your head dangle down. I should say that if you are struggling to reach the floor, you can also put your hands on blocks. Bend both of your knees deeply, sink your hips down, put your hands on your thighs and let's come up slowly. So lift your chest a little bit and then lift your head and look forward and start to straighten your legs. Good, and then just take a nice easy breath in Tadasana. I really like that slow transition up to standing after being in a forward bend for some time just gives the body chance to um, adjust the blood pressure. Take an inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hands come down. Okay, repeating, inhale. And then exhale. One more. Rest the hands at your sides and feel your body in mountain pose. Without tucking your tail, allow your spine to be in its natural curves. Your pubic bone can rotate somewhat forward. Your chest is lifting. Your legs are strong. And notice what you've worked with so far. Feeling the center of the body, waking up the spine, strengthening the front of the body, the back of the body, and the sides of the body. You know, so these rich movements, so good for building that sort of stability and integrity that we need in order to move ourselves forward with intention. So we're gonna play with some balance. We'll start just lifting the heels, lowering the heels. If you need to, you just keep both heels down on the ground. Okay, so inhale the arms up, lift your heels. Can you bend your knees as you bring your hands down while keeping your heels up? So we're coming into a chair pose. Good, keep breathing. Put your heels down, stretch your arms up. Big breath in. Lift your heels, exhale, bend your knees. Can you keep your heels up? Oh. 
Okay, and then heels down. We'll do one more. Heels up. <laughs> I'm so wobbly. Heels down, straighten up. Ooh. Okay, so this feels very nourishing and also simultaneously challenging for me, um, having just taken a long haul flight and not really sleeping very well <laughs> yet. So it's been interesting. And this practice is exactly what I need actually to find stability and to feel grounded. Okay, a little bit of challenge, but also quite controlled and slow. I'm just gonna move these blocks over. Okay, let's come into some lunges. Please have your blanket nearby if you need it. Step to the top of the mat. Big breath in, raise the arms. Exhale, bow forward. Step back into a plank pose with straight arms. And the same option to put the knees on the floor. So you choose which one is best for you. In the plank pose, press your heels back. Notice how that adds much more stability to the pose. Tailbone wraps under, belly draws up. Shoulder blades feel like they're wrapping around the sides of your body. Crown of the head drawing forward. Breath slow and steady. Good, come all the way down. Feet wide enough, heels slightly out. Cobra pose. Drag the hands back, ribs forward, shoulder blades down. Breathe, feel that beautiful curve of your spine. Come all the way down. Good, come back to kneeling and step your right foot forward for low lunge. Now you're very welcome to put padding under your left knee if that helps you. Okay, so we're gonna take the arms up. This um, archetypal back bend shape, sinking the hip forward and down. If the arms up doesn't work, you can always bring the hands in front or the hands to the front leg. Take your fingertips to your elbow, sorry, fingertips to your shoulders. You're going to inhale the elbows up, exhale back. Good, and then let's take a twist. The left hand on the floor or left hand on a block if you struggle to reach the floor. Right hand on right thigh, turn chest to right. Either keep the hand on the thigh, reach the right hand up to the sky, or circle the right arm, big circles. Move with your breath. Find a rhythm that suits you. You don't need to rush. Enough rushing, enough rushing in life without us adding rushing to our yoga practice. Good, then both hands to the front leg. Okay, lift your chest up. Feel steady by pressing the right foot down strongly. Separate your arms like goalposts. Cross your left elbow on top of your right. Hook the arms, lift the elbows up. Elbows forward, forearms vertical. If you can't bring the forearms together, please don't worry. It's okay, yeah? You might be able to bring the bottom fingers to the base of the top thumb. Hopefully you can see that. And then if it pleases you, if it feels good in your body, Allow your hips to come forward. Okay, feel how you're separating your shoulder blades at the back as you draw the arms forward. Such a wonderful um, configuration for the arms, for the shoulders. Relax the face, relax the jaw, breathe. Okay, and open up the arms, maybe a little shrug of the shoulders. 
bring the hands down. Let's come back to kneeling. And then if it suits you, we'll take a little flow through plank, cobra, and down dog before we come to second side. So reach the heels back, crown of the head forward, belly up. Good, come all the way down. Cobra pose. Return to the floor, downward facing dog. I'm really enjoying having the feet a bit wider and the heels slightly out turned. My very noisy clock, maybe you heard that. <laughs> Bring the knees to the floor, step the left foot forward, low lunge. Both arms to the sky. There's something about this pose where I feel rooted, very much um, noticing my left foot and pelvis as an anchor, whilst the spine and the upper body, the fingers reaching for a sort of eternity and the head lifting up to the heavens. So it's grounded and rooted and stable, as well as uplifted and receptive and inviting. Bring the fingertips to the shoulders and then you'll circle the elbows. Right hand to the floor, underneath the shoulder. Please use a brick if it helps. Turn chest to the left, left hand on the thigh. Okay, so we're going to either stay here or reach the arm up or take some big circles. So notice how this combined, you know, what I've been working with is bringing awareness in to the center, creating that strength and stability, and then starting to expand out. Good, and then we'll press the both hands onto the front leg and come back up to your low lunge. Arms like goalposts, Cross your, bring the arms way forward uh, so you feel the shoulder blades start to widen. Cross the right elbow on top of the left, hook the elbows, lift them up, forward and up with the elbows. Might be that the arms cannot come together and that's okay. They might be able to, you might be able to connect the fingers to the base of the thumb. We sink the hips forward and down if it feels inviting to do that. Lift the elbows. So you might be looking forward either side of the forearms or up towards the fingers or even closing the eyes. Good, unwrap the arms, bring the hands down, and let's come back. Now you're gonna make a choice. You can go plank, cobra, down dog, or take a rest in child's pose, or sit up. And you might return to, as we began, the hand on the belly, the hand on the heart. So choose your own sequence. Always meeting your own needs with this practice. And then just as you're ready, we'll bring the hands to the floor, come into a kneeling position, tuck your toes, lift your bum, put your heels down, standing forward bend. 
You might want to wiggle your feet in so they're about hip distance. And again, we're going to arise slowly as you bend your knees, sink your hips down. So double benefit of just checking that the body regulates itself before rushing up. And also you're feeling that nice strong strength in the legs. Put the hands on the thighs, lift your chest. Bring the arms forward, perhaps to the shoulder height, or the arms can be alongside the ears, chair pose. If all of that is too much, hands in front of the heart. And then as you slowly press into the legs, straighten the legs, come up to standing, bring the arms down, notice how you feel. Okay, so we're gonna play with a couple of standing balances. The first one that we'll do is eagle pose. And then there is an option, if you can't cross the legs like this, you can take tree pose. So that would be where the standing leg is straight. The other leg will turn out to the side, foot can stay on the floor, can come to the inner calf, or you can bring it up to the inner thigh, okay? <laughs> like so. So you choose your own way with this sequence. If you're coming into eagle with me, you can bend both knees and we're bringing the hips back. So you're in that imaginary chair pose, okay? Just drawing, gathering the belly up, bringing your hips back, a little bit of weight into your heels, not so much that the toes are lifting, but the foot feels balanced. Lift your left heel, lift your left leg, cross the legs over, squeeze the legs together, just as we did with the arms, squeeze the legs together, perhaps wrapping the toe behind the calf. Don't worry if you can't do that. You're gonna look forward, lift your chest and stay, or option to cross right elbow on top of left for the eagle arms. So you either have the hands together or wrap the arms. So do your best to breathe. Feel how you're squeezing everything into the center of the body, but also can you sort of energetically and with your breath, take your awareness up and out. One more breath, <laughs> unwind the legs. Ooh. And then you might take a little shimmy. After a very interrupted night's sleep, I have to say I'm feeling the uh, effort of this practice. <laughs> Hopefully it will help me sleep well tonight, but I'm not overdoing it. I'm definitely being like moderate, if you like. And this is, I think, the benefit of a slow practice is that we can really keep checking in and orienting ourselves to what we need. So we're gonna bend the knees, bring the hips back, yeah. Lift the right heel and cross the legs. This is going to be the trickier side for me. You know, it's, uh, of course we're not even <laughs> right and left. Of course one side is more difficult than the other, but work with kindness. And again, you can cross your elbows if you'd like to. Your left would be on top of your right. And as you squeeze the legs and maybe the arms into the center, into the midline of the body, can you simultaneously feel yourself expanding up and out with the breath? Relax your jaw, relax your face. Okay, unwind the legs when you're ready. And then a little. So the legs are carrying us through our day. We want to have strong legs. This work is strengthening the legs, the hips, the glutes, all of which helping you to feel stronger and more stable as you go about your day. Now there's one more um, balance that I'd like to show you. And I'm gonna bring in a chair because this one is, um, 
it can be helpful to have a little bit of uh, stability. And again, if it doesn't work, you can take regular chair pose with both feet on the floor. Fantastic. You could repeat tree pose. You could also do this one sitting down. I'll show you in a moment. So you'll stand, bend your knees, stand on your right, bring your left ankle across, and we're here like this. Okay, so the chair can help you to feel more stable. Now we're hinging at the hip. Notice what's happening here. I'm not rounding, I'm hinging. Yeah, I hope you can see. So you're going to take your hips down and then straighten the leg. Another way you can do this uh, hip stretch is just to sit on the edge of the chair and to put one ankle on top of the bottom leg. But this is so great for working all these muscles, stretching and strengthening. Okay, let's change sides. Just a little bit of time to notice what bubbles up from one side to the other. I hope you can see it okay. It's uh, not the best light with the leggings. Here we go. So your hips are coming back. Good, okay. Put the legs down, again, a little shimmy if it helps you. Okay, we're gonna do one more standing pose and then we'll come down to the floor. So step your left foot forward, take a generous step between the front and back foot. Slightly turn your left toes out and your right foot is turning as far forward as it can uh, to be comfortable for the ankle, knee and hip. You're gonna lift your chest up and bend your front knee. So this is warrior one. <clears throat> you might shuffle your feet further forward and back to suit you. You could also lift the back heel and come into high lunge if you struggle to keep the back heel on the floor. Okay. Arms lifting. Feet anchored. Pelvis descending towards the earth. At the same time, as upper body reaching up, lifting up. So feel the balance between meeting the ground, feeling stable and reaching up <laughs> and expanding into possibility. You could also try lifting your front heel, which makes it really spicy. Heel down, leg straight, arms down. Change to side two. The legs are not too narrow left, right. Okay, back foot is turning forward. You bend the front knee and the pelvis drops towards the floor, but you feel strong. So it's a combination of pressing the legs down, sinking the pelvis down, and reaching up. And again, please lift the back heel if you need to. Send the breath deep and wide. Option to lift the front heel. Really kind of grateful for these strong, legs and hips that carry us. Place the front heel down, straighten the front leg, arms down, step the feet hip distance, shake it out, move, do what feels good for you, okay? Make it work. Let's come to the top of the mat. 
Breathe in, reach your arms up. Exhale, bow forward. Ah, let it go. Maybe some nice big sighing breaths. Ooh. And then you can choose. You can take child's pose or plank, low plank, cobra, and down dog, or down dog. So make it your own. As you're ready, lower your knees to the floor and come to a seat. Ah, so we're going to come onto our backs. I'd like to show you some options um, before uh, you come down so that it makes sense. It's sometimes easier to see before you're lying down. So with bridge pose, if you have a brick, have it nearby. So we're going to take the feet comfortably close to the bum hip distance. Option one is to have the arms down, perhaps even holding the edges of the mat and lift your bum. Okay. So feel like your thighs are parallel. You're switching on the inner thigh muscles, lifting your hips up. And this is a fantastic pose, really lovely way to create strength and also start to open up into the chest and the back bend. Now, option two might be to take some support under the pelvis so you can rest and make it a gorgeous restorative pose. Third option, a little more interesting, a little more challenge. And again, you can hold the edges of the mat if you'd like to, you're gonna lift your bum as high as it will. Then you'll lift your left heel, bring the knee up, and then step the foot down, lift both sides up, right heel, right leg, foot down, level the pelvis. Okay, so you could exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. We're working to keep both sides lifted without too much dropping down and as if you're doing so make your choices my friends about which option you're going for and if you're doing this marching on the spot bridge just keep checking in with your uh, head face shoulders let's avoid um kind of clenching the jaw face as relaxed as it can be you can always smile <laughs> yeah, you might want to lift your hips a little bit higher in between so really working the legs working the back okay and, and again please choose the option that serves you best and I'll just give you a, another minute or so on that And when you're done, you're back to the floor. Take a rest. So it might be feet wide, knees knocking together. Or you might like to bring your feet together and let your knees go wide. Mm, nice big breath. And then when you're done, go ahead and stretch out your legs and your arms and then you can hug your knees in towards your belly give yourself a little rock a little hug well done and then you're going to choose whether to lie down and rest for about six minutes or whether to sit up and take seated meditation so i'm um a huge fan of a full shavasana and by that i mean at least 15 to 20 minutes but I wanted to really get you moving today so we don't have that long um, if you are lying down make yourself as comfortable as you can be and put some warm clothes on if you have them 
And of course you can put something soft under your head and then it might be knees bent or legs straight. So you're gonna find the posture that works for you. However, if you would like to take a seat of meditation pose, I would recommend having something under your pelvis to lift your hips up a bit so that your spine can be in its more optimal and aligned position with the curve. So you're not, um, you're not rounding your lower back, your lower back maintains its natural curve and you can sit up nice and tall. So whichever one you're in, make yourself comfortable. A little scan through the body, notice if you could be even more comfortable you can just 5% more comfortable. And then take some deliberately long, slow breaths. Breathe in through the nose, fill the whole body with breath. Ah, let it go and do this at least two more times. So if it suits you to close the eyes, go ahead and do that. And if not, it's fine to keep the eyes open, but see if you can direct your awareness um, in and back and down, feeling your body. And take a moment to notice the props that are supporting you, the earth below you. Feel the body grounded and stable. A sense of letting go of the weight of the body into the support of the earth. Relax the facial muscles. Relax and soften the jaw. Tongue, relax, softening back, widening. Inviting the mind to follow the example of the body. To let go of its incessant chatter. And particularly if you're sitting, relax your shoulders. Notice the breath move through you. without the need to control anything. Feel the body breathing itself. Body breathing itself. And you can rest here in this moment with the body, with the breath. Allowing this moment to arise perfectly as it is. If you find your mind is busy, Anchor your awareness with physical sensation or with the sensation of breathing.
and now consciously and deliberately invite some deeper breaths. Fill the body with breath and let it go. And do this again, filling the body with breath, taking in the good, taking in energy, and letting go, letting go. And if you're lying on your back, then you might like to start to stretch out your arms and your legs, making some lovely uh, movement, whichever feels nourishing. If you're sitting, you might just orient yourself and feel into the body a little bit. And if you're lying down and you'd like to join me in a seated pose to conclude the class, then just make your way to your side and ease yourself up to a seat in the sweetest way. Okay, and then together, let's reach the arms out to the sides. Inhale as we bring the arms up. Draw the hands together down through the center of the body. Rest the hands there in front of the heart. So notice the effect of this practice. And really our yoga practice is the work of taking action and then reflecting on any findings, any changes. It's a continual process of action and reflection whether your practice is two breaths or 60 minutes. So notice how you feel. Circle back to your own intention. What feeling are you looking to take with you? Are you cultivating? Are you calling in to support your day or to support your week? Can you feel that alive in you right now? There might be other things you could do to support the flourishing of this feeling as you go about your day. And so my wish for you is that this practice supports you to grow, to feel peaceful, strong, centered, joyful. And may we each become a mirror that reflects the inner radiance and inherent goodness of every being we meet. And we, may we first see that same quality in ourselves. Namaste. Thank you all for joining me and have a beautiful day. And I hope to see you soon.